obviously a, a huge moment to take advantage of. And I think that one of the key things that's been interesting and, and uh, instructive about this is that our organizations as you know online and offline uh, groups were had have evolved over the pa past you know for us seven years um, to a point where our tools are getting much more effective and we were able to implement um, some key tactics that we've never been able to implement before so it was it was kind of a, a great combination of a key moment and the right tools at the right time for some key tactical victories that I think can actually be instructive for some of the other fights that we are going to have in places like Michigan and Ohio and New Jersey um, and so I just want to talk about some of the lessons that we've learned and and some of the, the successes that we've had so um, first of all um, you know, as Daniel talked about, we had the, the rallies. Um, DFA raised $200,000 for the Democratic Senate Committee to help them stay out of the state for longer. Um, and that helped to create this space so that we could use some of these tools. And the first thing is what you saw uh, at the beginning of this session, which were really great ads. I mean, what we have that the other side doesn't have are real people's stories. Um, and that is powerful. And that really galvanized, I think, a lot of the people around the country. I mean. For me, anyway, the first time I saw this ad, when I saw those people standing out there shivering in the cold, you know, telling their stories, it, it moved me to tears. And I knew that this ad was going to be tremendously successful. And our members really jumped on it across the country. Um, I don't remember exactly how much we raised in the first round, but it was somewhere around half a million dollars. Um, and that was unprecedented for a state-based campaign um, for people all around the country really jumping on in a, for a non-election issue. Um, what was particularly exciting about this was for our first ad and for the second ad, which got into the signature gathering phase, is that we beat Crossroads GPS and Carl Rove on the air. We were able to run more ads in more places, and our ads were frankly just more effective. Their ads were run-of-the-mill political, you know, picture of the Scott Walker, picture of the State House, you know, narrator kind of thing. Um, whereas our ads were, you know, actual real people stories, and we were elevating them to the level that they, you know, really should have been at from the very beginning. Um, secondly, the ways that we were able to engage our networks on the ground um, have gotten much better. Um, when we sent out the first call for volunteers for a petition gathering, just amongst DFA members, uh, we got 2,600 volunteers to gather petitions, and that really helped the grassroots movement because uh, not only you know, was that a lot of energy and a lot of momentum, but it helped save a lot of money to have all those volunteers out there gathering those petitions and to get that done effectively and quickly. Um, we have 25,000 members in Wisconsin, so that means that 10% of DFA members actually volunteered to gather petition signatures, which is really exciting. And then people engaged as volunteers from around the country as well. We had a call out the vote uh, program, which we activated around the um, Kloppenberg uh, judicial race which um, we generated uh, with the PCCC uh, 96,000 calls in um, about a week. Um, and that, with, along with the work that we did with the unions on the ground, created a 30-point jump for Kloppenberger at, what am I saying that right? um, at, um, in her race and came very close to winning. We, we weren't able to push her over the top. But what's instructive about that is that none of the Republicans who are up for recall right now could survive that kind of 30 point jump that you can generate through calls around the country. Um, and then uh, finally, I want to say that this, the magnitude of this is, is really significant. I mean, before this is over, DFA alone is going to spend $1.5 million in Wisconsin. Um, and we're able to do it on you know, these key things like ads and call out the vote. But for the first time, we are going to do, and I'm announcing this here for the first time today, exciting news, um, a canvas on the ground in three key districts. Um, we're probably going to hire about 35 staffers. We're coordinating with VR Wisconsin. Um, and we're going to talk, talk to people, identify voters, get the people we called out to vote. And I think that's going to make a huge difference in this race. And that's because of the support of all the people around the, the country and our ability to take advantage of this key moment and really put the right tools in place to make a difference um, on this key issue. And this is, you know, essentially, um, we're laying down the gauntlet in Wisconsin. And that's going to set the standard, I think, for what's going to happen in the other states. And so um, I, I really think that this is instructive for all of us to learn like why these state-based battles are so important and how they can really galvanize uh, the rest of the country. Absolutely. Thanks, Lavana.